All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here. This is U.S. imperialism in the Pacific. This is for our unit or uh, the unit age of imperialism. So here are objectives and standards. Uh, explain imperialism by the United States in the Pacific and to analyze economic imperialism by American industry in the region. Take a look at the standards too, please. Okay, essential question, how the United States moved towards imperialism in the Pacific. So the United States and the Spanish fought against each other uh, in the late 1800s. As a result of the war, the United States won and they gained the Philippine Islands, Guam, and Puerto Rico. And President William McKinley uh, favored imperialism at the time and believed that Americans could uh, educate and uplift Filipinos uh, in the Philippine Islands. Now, there, like we just said, Filipinos are those who live in the Philippine Islands. Uh, many of the Filipino people did not want American rule after Spanish control for many years. Uh, and Emilio, Emilio Aguinaldo, uh, I believe I'm saying that right, led, uh, leader of the Nationalists for the Filipinos, argued that the Americans had promised independence uh, after the uh, war with the Spanish. And so many of uh, these nationalists in the Philippine Islands believed they should be granted their independence. So they declared independence and formed the Philippine Republic. So the United States fought against the Filipino nationalists from 1899 to 1902. Uh, the Americans had promised to help the Filipinos achieve self-rule, and they did this by building uh, railroads, hospitals, and schools. Uh, but just like in Africa and other parts of Asia, uh, business interests in the region also caused uh, Filipinos to convert to a cash crop system where they were producing crops uh, for uh, money value instead of just other values. Um, let's talk about Hawaii. The United States began to have interest in Hawaii in the 1790s when it served as a port and in the 1820s Americans built sugar plantations to support the rise of sugar production on the islands. Um, with that said, American sugar planters began to have more political control. In 1890, the McKinley Tariff Act eliminated tariffs on all sugar entering the United States. Um, so what that meant was that uh, this cut into the profits of American sugar producers on the Hawaiian Islands, uh, meaning that Americans would get sugar cheaper from other locations around the world. So American sugar plantation owners began to look towards annexation as a solution. And for those of you who don't know what it means, annexation is when a country adds uh, territory to it. So it would be like the United States adding Hawaii uh, to uh, our country. At the time, Queen Louis Kalani, if I'm saying that proper as well, uh, came to the throne uh, in Hawaii around the same time. Now, she wanted to increase her power as a monarch and restore the strength of the Hawaiians. Uh, American business leaders learned of this and put a plan in place to remove her from power. Right, in 1893, she was removed from power. Annexation. 1894, Sanford B. Dole, uh, the gentleman whose picture you see in the kind of top right corner there, was a wealthy plantation owner and pol uh, politician, excuse me, who was named president of the new Republic of Hawaii. He asked the President of the United States um, to annex Hawaii, and that gentleman right below him is President Grover Cleveland. Uh, President, Grover, uh, President Cleveland refused, excuse me. Um, 1898, Hawaii was annexed by the United States. Okay, so our closure. How did the United States move towards imperialism in the Pacific? So think about some of the different areas, some of the different regions the United States is looking to expand into, uh, looking to expand into, excuse me, and trying to uh, take control over and some of the areas that they uh, did expand into as well, and that'll help you answer uh, your questions. Uh, please try your best on the questions that follow. Let me know of any questions or concerns, and I uh, hope to talk to you all again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.